First at four, Detroit police remembering one of their own who died in the line of duty. A public vigil set to begin to honor fallen officer Lauren Kortz. Plus, President Biden continues his Middle East trip with a high stakes meeting with the Saudi crown prince. Paula? Well, the glass is half full for an endangered species making a small comeback. It's a small comeback, but at least it's a comeback, Paul. We've got a live report coming up. And take a look at what's showing up on Storm Tracker 4. We'll take a closer look at that and talk about the timing for your weekend rain chances all straight ahead, first at 4. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandra Ali. First at four, things are calm out there right now, but the local forecasters tracking a little bit of rain for your Friday night. Let's get over to Paul Gross with a look at what we can expect tonight. And Paul, also this weekend. Yes, and hey, Sandra, I hope you're having a good afternoon. I am as well, and we are dry right now. We've had a fairly pleasant day, but you can see rain is starting to encroach from the west here. Let's just move this over a little bit. You can see this is nothing crazy, nothing severe, no lightning here with any of it. You can see even to the north here, we're not really seeing any lightning, anything with any of this stuff. So basically, we're looking at some much needed rain moving in. We don't want it on the weekend. We're going to get some, and we'll talk about that weekend in about uh, 10 minutes. But basically, it looks like the front edge of this stuff should be to the far western part of our area by about six o'clock or so and then we'll continue moving eastward after that so rain will progress eastward and we'll be getting some showers through the evening hours right now though if you're taking advantage of the uh, um, of the uh, uh, nice afternoon we have temperatures right now that are up around 80 degrees and those temperatures are going to slide much slower than in recent nights because of the cloud cover. So you can see here's a nice shot of the Clinton River there in our Mount Clemens sky camps. So again, upper 70s to right around 80 degrees, very dry air overhead. And through the evening, again, just a slow drop in temperature, but the showers increasing. We'll talk more about that weekend in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Paul. Happening right now, Detroit police getting ready to hold a public vigil in honor of Officer Lauren Quartz, who died in the line of duty last week. It is set from 430 until 530 at the department's second precinct on the city's west side. Also, we should point out visitation is also set for tomorrow and again on Sunday at Greater Grace Temple on West 7 Mile. The funeral is Monday morning at 1130, also at Greater Grace. Sean Lay is headed to the vigil and he will have a live report for you when you join us coming up tonight starting at 5 o'clock. Meanwhile, while Governor Whitmer has ordered all flags across the state to be lowered to half staff on Monday to honor and remember Officer Quartz. In Troy, a man dies after getting pinned underneath a wood chipper. It happened right around 11 Thursday morning. This is in the area of West Maple and Coolidge. Police say two men were working on a wood chipper. One of them got pinned underneath it. They say the machine reportedly fell off the jack and on to the man. That 45-year-old man had to be taken to the hospital where he later died. We're told the machine was actually not turned on at the time of the accident. There's overall good news about gas prices, which right now continue to decline. Drivers all across the country paying an average of $4.57 for a gallon of regular gas. Here at home, statewide prices are down two cents to around $4.68 per gallon. Across Metro Detroit, prices are down four cents from yesterday to right around $4.74. There is some relief at the pump at one gas station in Dearborn. Our cameras captured drivers at the Sitco. This is off of Michigan Avenue. The prices there were lowered to under $4. The cheaper gas drew long lines, as you can imagine. It also ended with the station running out of gas. This station, by the way, is known for being lower than most of the other local stations. The 988 National Suicide Hotline will officially launch tomorrow. People who are experiencing a mental health crisis can call or even text that three-digit number to reach the National Suicide Prevention, Life Prevention Lifeline. Trained mental health professionals will be there, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They will provide free and confidential emotional support to anyone in distress. The hotline has a network of 200 certified crisis centers all across the country. Officials say 988 is more than a suicide and crisis hotline. They say it's a response to a cry for help as suicide and mental health issues increase. President Biden became the first American leader to fly directly from Israel to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia today, really signaling warming ties between the two Middle East nations as they find common cause against regional threats from Iran. Our Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom for us this afternoon. Kimberly, we know the president is looking to try to reshape this relationship. 
That's right, Sandra. Good afternoon to you. President Biden facing some political landmines, though, on the human rights front. He's meeting with nine different heads of state on this trip, including today with the Saudi crown prince. Before today's highly anticipated meeting, President Biden was greeted by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The two exchanged a fist bump after days of speculation of how they would greet each other. Audio from the meeting was not recorded because of Saudi restrictions on the use of boom microphones. Bin Salman did not respond when a reporter asked if he would apologize to the family of Jamal Khashoggi. Khashoggi is the reporter who was killed back in 2018. U.S. officials say they believe Ben Salman approved the plan that resulted in the capture and murder of Khashoggi. Biden himself also didn't respond to a comment that a reporter asked if he still believed Saudi Arabia was, quote, still a pariah. Listen. Thanks to many months of quiet diplomacy by the staff, we've accomplished some significant business today. First, as you saw this morning, the Saudis will open their airspace to all civilian carriers. That is a big deal, a big deal, not only, not only symbolically, but substantively, it's a big deal. It means Saudi airspace is now open to flights to and from Israel. This is the first tangible step on the path of what I hope will eventually be a broader normalization of relations. President Biden insists his purpose in Saudi Arabia is to promote U.S. interests, which includes urging the Saudis to boost oil production with hopes of bringing down gasoline prices at home. We'll have more on the latest the president's trip when you join us tonight. Five. Until then, Sandra, we'll send it back to you. All right. We'll see you then. Thank you, Kimberly. So how about some good news for the environment today? Numbers are actually rising for a critter that's been endangered and actually on the endangered species list since the 90s. We're talking about the monarch butterfly. The population is up and get this, a 35% increase over last year and in no small part because of the interventions of people. Paula Tutman joins us live now from Sylvan Lake where neighbors there are doing their part. But Paula, this is still good news, not so good news, right? Yeah, but you know, let's go with the good news first because we've got some hot action going here. I want you to see what happened. We just saw this egg being hatched, but not hatched, excuse me, being laid by a female monarch, of course. But here's the kind of not so good news. A 35% increase seems mammoth unless you were at zero. And that's what experts are telling me. So, you know, Local 4 started the Birds, Bees, and Butterflies campaign several years ago to bring attention to the importance of proactively getting involved with beneficial species and honestly, Folks who are doing this stuff, they're getting to see the fruits of their labor actually pay off. And look, there's a butterfly right there. There she is. Look at that. The way you can tell that this is milkweed is when you break the leaf or break it, it has a milky substance. For the hungers in Sylvan Lake, you may as well call their home milkweed paradise because that is what it is for the monarch butterfly. Look, we found a caterpillar. Eggs and caterpillars. Yeah, he's a fairly new one. I can remember the very first, uh, the very first caterpillar that she found. We got this brand new guy right here. And we brought it in and we had it in a little cage and it was like, it was, it was almost like we were having a baby, you know? It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, we got so excited when it finally hatched. You videotaped We the videotaped whole it and we came out here on the front, opened it up and watched it fly away and it was ridiculous, but it was a lot of fun. This is just one family doing what so many families across the globe and right here in Michigan are doing, their part to save an endangered species. This this guy looks good. We'll take him in too so that we're sure that nothing nothing heart hurts him. And today, with reports that monarch numbers are on the rise, there's a real sense of excitement and contribution. We are making a difference. It's joyful. It's a joyous thing. So it's, you know, you, you get back from doing stuff like this. The number count comes from last year's survey of overwintering monarchs. The Circe Society Western Monarch Thanksgiving count tallied 247,000 237 monarch butterflies observed across the West. Now, that sampling showed a more than 100-fold increase from the previous year's total of less than 2,000 monarchs. And that's the highest total since 2016. But this wildly important improvement only gives the species some breathing room. Well, we don't look at 35% increase as mammoths. Uh, we're, we're looking for a lot more than that. Communities setting up no spray zones and no mow zones to protect habitat. Backyard gardeners planting their own milkweed. 
And yes, small-scale adopt and release projects from school classrooms to kitchen tables are clearly adding up. Household efforts to help monarchs and other pollinators really matter because uh, it's, it's very clear that they work and you got a 35% uh, increase. Uh, yes, it's a good step, but we need, we need uh, much bigger increases uh, over the next few years. And, and, and take a look at how often does this happen, Sandra? I mean, really, monarch butterfly, fly in on cue. This is awesome. So how do we get that number up from a, a, to an additional 35% or say 60%? We can all do even a little part. So you can plant milkweed, native plants, pollinating plants. Get your neighbors together to ask your, your municipality to not mow or use insecticides during the brooding periods of the summer months. Every little bit counts. And this is the great thing. We are actually seeing a positive human effect on Mother Nature. It's very, very exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, monarch butterfly, female, take a bow. Sandra? Love to see. You're right, Paula. Every little bit helps. All right. Thank you.